Ladies and gentlemen, today is Mer May 18th, 2017. And this is the Ken Kale Show, episode 339, where we learn to be better artists. My name is Ken Lafferty, and today we are going to be doing a very special topic, and that is, of course, battling our most hated of enemies, the blank canvas. And I'm going to be teaching you guys how to get ideas. And of course, we're going to be doing mermaid, we're jumping on the bandwagon, we're going to be having a lot of fun with that. And the reason for today's show is because you guys have been submitting questions like this. Like, I want to point this way, but I'm supposed to point that way. Like this. How do you come up with ideas of what to draw and struggling on ideas and not finishing paintings? By the way, thank you for these amazing questions. I noticed that every week you guys seem to have like, there's trends in your questions and I like it because it gives me ideas for new shows. So of course today we're going to be talking about how to get ideas and I've called it more, of course I've added some extra drama to it by saying battling. We will be taking our weapon of choice and we will be battling the blank canvas. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Let's jump right on into it. Love Elaine has moved to the end of the show. You guys are familiar with that. So, of course, we can just get right into it, people. Okay, so lesson one. Lesson one with battling the blank canvas. Of course, you pull it up and you're just like, okay, let's do this. And then you can literally feel as you are getting ready to push down with your stylus to the, the pad, you can feel this force like pushing away from it. You don't know where to start. You don't know if you should start, you know, I don't know, like maybe uh, over here. And oh my gosh, the tablet is not working. The tablet is not working. Okay, hang on. <laughs> there's, there's a couple ways we can fix this. <laughs> there's a couple ways we can fix this. This is not how I imagined this show going <laughs> at all. But it is good to be back. It's good to be back in the studio. And it is good that it's like a really cold day. It is a really cold day. Okay, so let's see if I can get this to work. If not, then I'm literally gonna have to start this over. Which would be a shame. Lesson one is make sure that everything is actually working on your Photoshop. That's always good. Oh my gosh, it fixed it. Oh my gosh, it fixed it. I liked that intro so much that so we're just gonna roll with it. Okay, so lesson one is make sure that Photoshop is actually working. Lesson two, create a new layer, okay? Now, you're probably wondering, okay, where do I start? Should I start just like sketching down here? Uh, maybe I'll start by drawing like a face. Yeah, okay, when we're drawing mermaids, right? So we gotta have like, gotta have like some sexy bodies going on, right? Mm, yeah. And then, okay, well they have like fish tails. Okay, and you're like, ah, but this is like, this is okay, but this is, this is boring. This is boring. And, and look at all this extra space that we haven't used. Oh no, it's a failure, ah. So, of course, and if, in case you're wondering, yes, this is exactly how this is exactly how all my drawings start. So don't don't feel bad. You're not alone. So I'm gonna teach you guys a really cool trick for how to battle the blank canvas. And the first option is the first tactic that you will use is you, you want to make sure that your references grab your references. Hey, why are there knights in shining armor? Oh, because that's lesson two of today. And that is make something interesting. Make something interesting and. The way that you come up with a new idea or get an interesting idea is by taking something such as this beautiful photo that I found on Google of this mermaid and like we all know what that looks like. We know what mermaids look like, but then we want to mix it with something else. And today I've chosen to mix it with medieval knight armor and we're going to have a lot of fun with that. And the reason why this makes things so much different or a little bit more unique, I wouldn't say this is probably a, the most unique idea by any means. The reason why this is going to help us is because we have the mermaid, right? Look at that, I'm going right into it. Once you have your canvas set up, once you have it so it's not blank, you have something to look at, it makes drawing a lot easier. And we really like that. So immediately we're gonna start drawing in, and, and here is lesson one. Here is lesson one, and I'm already making a mistake, and I'm glad I did this live, so that way you guys can see it. I want to start like sculpting in this mermaid, right? And look at this, I'm drawing in this head shape, right? And I could like start laying in my measurements. I could start zooming in and being like, okay, well, I, wanna, I want this to look pretty. I want this to look pretty for the stream so that way people will think that I know what I'm doing, but I can already tell you that I'm doing something wrong. And can you guess what it is? It's similar to what we were doing with our thumbnails. And that is that we're working too big. We're working too big to start. Rather what we want to do is we want to come up with silhouettes. We want to allow happy accidents to happen. And that is not going to happen if we're working too large. Okay, so do yourself a favor. 
start very, very small like this. I'm gonna show you. So I shrunk it down. Is that small enough? No, I'd say we have to go even smaller. Let's go something like this. And what you're gonna, like this. Look, look at how tiny I'm drawing right here. Now I want you to start drawing in shapes, like interesting, um, interesting, what's the word I'm looking for? Relationships, relationships. And I want you to play around with, say, okay, well, here's the headpiece. Well, do you notice how it's so much easier to make a giant tail? And then I've got like this triangle that represents, I don't know, maybe this could be the armor pieces that are coming off here. And then I want you to start drawing tons and tons of little, tiny little silhouettes. Okay, here's a new one. Okay, I started with this giant shape. Maybe this could be the hair. And I want you to notice how as you do this, you're already gonna start coming up with a bunch of cool ideas just by scribbling. Almost scribbling and just going crazy with it. This mermaid, hey, this mermaid is gonna have three tails. Three tails. So she's got two things that kind of come off here and then she's got one big one here. Or actually this one should come down to a small point. Cause I like this general shape that's happening. And this is what is so important about coming up with ideas in a small state, is that it allows you to look at the piece as a whole and you can say stuff like, oh, well, I like the general silhouette. I like, the, could this be the hair? Could this be the armor that creates that shape? We don't know yet. But we're able to start forming relationships and that is by working small, small, not this. Not this, okay? Don't start drawing your measurements and stuff like that. That's for later. Okay, so I'm just gonna come up with a couple more here just on the fly. Let's see, we've got some larger, uh, like upper, it's really easy to like do like the big chest and then like skinny waist and then thin tail, but let's try something a little bit different. Let's try, um, let's try a thicker tail. Let's try a thicker tail. What if this entire upper part was like really skinny and then we came down to this giant tail, almost like, maybe it's like a jellyfish type thing. Let's try something like that. Maybe we could have something like that. Maybe a skinnier head. Maybe a taller head. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, I like that. That's cool. Very fun. Okay, next one. Let's go ahead and do something like this. But do you see, guys, see how much easier this is? And I'm even gonna draw it in profile. I'm gonna try a profile piece. Okay, so let's say that we got this cool hair. I had this idea like before I started of like this girl with like kelp hair. Like she just put a bunch of like kelp in her hair. Like maybe she she has like a tiny little like, I don't know, or maybe she doesn't have any hair at all. And she uses the kelp to create her hairdo. A mermaid wig, if you will. Okay, cool. Mm. Mm, I like that. Okay. So now you can see that we're, do you see how even just the slightest change in how big I'm drawing my thumbnails already, it's taking on a bit more of a safe silhouette. Do you see how this is just like, oh, I can see a regular mermaid in there. Yet if I draw that same thing, let's try drawing it again, but very small. Try to draw it as small as possible. And see how your stylus or pen is able to move in a bit more of a free fashion able to move in a bit more of a free fashion and then you can start kind of making these big weird shapes big weird shapes and then you get something more like that now do you see how that is much more interesting do you see how you can kind of begin to put a lot more um, a lot more of your imagination can kind of take this silhouette and start to build things from it in fact I'm really liking this one really liking this one a lot and I think I want to roll with that I think I want to roll with that one. Um, but I also really liked how this one had this hair piece. I kind of want to, maybe we can inject a little bit of that in there. Ooh, that is really cool. All right, that is a winner. We're gonna grab that. All right, so there is step one, ladies and gentlemen, for how you come up with ideas. Draw small. If you're working too large, I don't know what it, what it is about this, but um, and a good example of this is in my sketchbook. I always do this always drawing tiny little silhouettes, tiny little um, things when I'm trying to come up with characters. And then when I get something that I like, then I begin to enlarge it like this. Now you can start working big. Now you can start working big, people. So go ahead and grab the one that you like. And don't worry, if you wanna see those sketches later, you can download the PSD on Patreon. But that's at the end of the show. But right now we're focusing on cleaning up our sketch. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is 
you've got the sketch that you liked. You got the general scratches or the chicken scratchings of what you like. Let's go ahead and lower the opacity on that. And now we can begin to go in there and start laying out our details. Da details. I'm really happy with this. I'm really digging how this is going so far. So we've got this medieval knight armor. Let's go ahead and start laying a little bit of that on. Well, of course we want to see the beautiful girl's face. So I'm going to have this helmet kind of like sticking up a little bit. And I don't know exactly a lot about medieval armor. So I apologize for any historians in the room for the terrible liberties I'm about to take with this armor. Okay. But even now you can see that I am going to be um, still working very roughly, very, very roughly. And that is just to lay on these armor pieces, okay? And I really like this. Like, whatever's happening in here, I really liked. And I'm trying to come up with motifs. I'm trying to think of flow. Like, I'm thinking of how would this actually work? I want to make sure that the character can actually still move their arms a little bit. It's one thing that I see a lot of people not keeping in mind enough when they make their armor designs is the character needs to be able to move, okay? So allowing a little bit of space, right? You can see these shoulder pads, these big bulky shoulder pads come up, but you could still see how there's a little bit of range of motion there, okay? Now kind of coming down, I like this. I always, I'm a big fan of taking the shoulder armor, or sorry, not, not the shoulder armor. Well, I do like the shoulder armor, but I really like these things. Uh, I totally forget what they're called. I think they're called coutier. The part that covers the elbow. I'm always a big fan of making these big and chunky because, it, I mean, just by nature, by the design, it has to be big and chunky so that way you can have that big range of motion but still have a good amount of protection there. And, of course, on our mermaid, it is going to be no different. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, you know what I want? I want this mermaid to have a really cool weapon. So you know what we can do? Rather than shrinking this back down to create a weapon, let's just zoom out the camera a little bit. And let's go ahead and control J this. And let's go ahead and come up with a couple ideas for weapons. Let's go ahead and come up with a couple ideas for weapons. So we're zoomed out, therefore making our canvas smaller just by proxy. And now I am allowing myself to come up with a weapon design. And look at that. See how much easier that is once you make it small? Because I think it just allows your, it allows like small little scribbles and weird things to come out that will give your ideas much more life. And that is, that's good. I, I think let's just roll with that. Let's just roll with that. Because I, I want to get to as much of the refinement as possible. Ideally, by the end of this, we have a pretty good looking sketch. And then you guys can go out there. Now that you know the, the main stuff, I've already taught you the main rule, uh, the trick that you need to know, the, the secret that you need to succeed in life. And I can go out and do that and have fun with that. But I didn't want this to be looking good by the end of it. So uh, we're definitely going to be focusing on more so probably the face and the hair, I think. But in the meantime, let's finish this up. Let's finish up the rest of this uh, armor. And all the while, while I am in here refining, I'm looking to the tiny little... I'm looking for tiny little details. Looking for tiny little details to kind of help inform how this is actually going to work. Tiny little details. Like, see this right here? Uh, it might be hard for you to look at, but I see this shape right there. And I'm trying to figure out how I can make that work. Like, what is that? Or it actually doesn't even matter what it is necessarily. But I want that to be part of our character's silhouette. Now, what is, well, you guys know what a silhouette is, but what is the importance of a silhouette? The importance of the silhouette is that it's the most prominent thing that our eye identifies at the beginning of looking at any image. This is why it's very important in comics to uh, have, very, especially during action scenes, you want to have the characters with clear silhouettes. I'm actually going to simplify the face to this for right now. You want to have clear silhouettes during scenes of action. And why is that? It's because your readers are going to be taking in information very quickly. It's a high intensity, energetic, dramatic scene, and you only have fractions of a second to get across the important information. Where is this character in relation to the other? What is it doing? What pose is it doing? And um, because of that, ooh, this is kind of cool. Ooh, I dig that. Ooh, I dig that, that's cool. Um, where was I going with that? 
Uh, oh yeah, it needs to be clear and silhouettes are the first thing that we look at. Okay, it's the first thing that we use to identify. So don't forget it. Don't forget it, people. I really like this here. And I really liked this here. That's awesome. I'm a big fan of the big tails too. Let's put in a big tail just for the heck of it. Just for the heck of it. Now, this big plume, I really like this big plume, but I kind of want to continue with the idea that maybe it's like kelp or seaweed. Let's just try that. Because I know that I want it to exist within this area. Now, do you see that? Guys, do you see how this image is much more interesting because we're following main rules? This mermaid, this is clearly a mermaid, but it is much different. It is, no, <laughs> that's not, that not an elegant way to put it. <laughs> uh, it's a mermaid, but it has a good mixture. It's not predictable necessarily. It's not a predictable mermaid silhouette. Right, like the stuff we did at the beginning. If I told you to draw a mermaid, you wouldn't necessarily think about this silhouette right off the bat. Okay, and that's what's important. I'm thinking maybe these things that are sticking off the edge, maybe these could be like mussels. These could be like little mussels that are kind of, or barnacles. Barnacles would be really cool. Dude, yeah, these barnacles could be like on the side and maybe they like have their little tongues sticking out. That'd be cool. I don't know, barnacles even have tongues. Well, now they do, because it is my show. It is my show, and I say barnacles have tongues. Okay, guys, so again, let's reiterate on earlier. We're looking in this sketch, and we're looking for designs. We're looking for things like this. And we're like, oh, I like this relationship. Oh, there's a little design right in there. Maybe we can kind of pull something out of that. And then see, because we've done this, oh, I'll show you a really cool way to design a weapon. A bit of a cheating way, but it works really well and I love it. I use it all the time. So just design one half of the weapon. Design one half of the weapon, like this. And then when you're happy with it, can you guess what we're gonna do? Yes, that's right, we're gonna mirror it. We're gonna mirror the other side and we're gonna let the computer do all the work for us and it's gonna look awesome. I can already tell it's gonna look awesome. So go ahead and take your lasso tool, grab half of that weapon, hit Control J, hit control T, and then you are going to flip it horizontally, okay? But now, of course, because we're drawing the weapon at an angle, we need to rotate it by clicking just outside of the box, and look at that. <gasps> Whoa, look at that, we're, we're amazing concept artists. Oh, wow, I bet you thought I drew all my weapons like carefully trying to get the symmetry right on point. No, just copy it and flip it, dang it. <laughs> save yourself, save your life, just copy it and flip it and you will have a good time with that. Ooh, I like that a lot. Maybe it needs to, there we go. Just kind of have some fine adjustments on that. Well, look at that. We have a concepted armor piece. We have a concepted weapon, and this is looking really, really good. Okay, so let's go ahead and move into the next stage of refinement. I'm gonna go ahead and grab all these layers. Let's shrink it down just a little bit so our mermaid has a little bit more breathing room. And we gotta zoom in there and let's do a final pass at the most important bits, the head and the kind of upper torso area because we want that to look really pretty for our thumbnail and because I know that's why you guys showed up. You want some sexy ladies, so let's do that. Let's do that, let's refine specifically that point. Okay, and now I'm thinking about a couple ways that we can do this because another thing that I've noticed is sometimes I like, do you notice how when I remove the sketch it still looks okay, but having that sketch in there, it, it adds those values. It adds a little bit of value and noise to the piece, which still at this point looks pretty good. I actually really like having that there. So what I'm thinking is that I'm going to just leave it. I'm just gonna leave that like that. And maybe we'll change the color a little bit. Maybe we can move it a little bit more towards, ooh, that looks kind of cool. That looks good. There we go, now we have a couple nice hues going on. Maybe we can move the mermaid lines a little bit darker. Darkening them always is nice for when you get to this stage. That looks pretty good. Okay guys, so now we're ready to zoom in there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go into overpaint now. I'm gonna go into overpaint. So what this means is that I'll actually just be painting with the colors that are actually present there. And uh, 
actually for this, yeah, let's let's just make it really big. Let's make this really big, and then we can zoom it back down when we're done. We can zoom it back down when we're done. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, that's good. That's really good. So right about there is perfect. So let's go ahead and head into the overpainting. So we're gonna take our values that we have here, and we're gonna begin sculpting our face. Okay, sculpting the face. So let's see here. The thing that I want to do is, I like the shadow being here, but I really want to begin laying in some measurements. Laying in some measurements and just making a, well actually maybe not even laying in measurements because we can kind of eyeball it. I usually eyeball it and be like, okay, here's the head and here's the chin shape, you know? And so I know that, you know, we can kind of just lay in a nose there, that'll be nice. And overall, this is gonna be still a very simple face. Still a very, very simple face. And here's how I like to draw my simple faces. Um, I usually do like, here's the nose. Here's the nose, sometimes I can put like a little nostril in there, but overall that's my nose. And then the lips look like that. And then you can kind of do this for like the bottom lip. Sometimes I'll put in a little bit of shading for, the, for that. But do you see how that immediately represents a nose and a mouth? Super easy. So you guys can try that out for yourselves. And then putting the eyes in is as simple as, you know, just kind of drawing two shapes that you like. And there you go, there's your face. So we're gonna kind of take that and we are going to translate that over. Actually, I should probably just leave that there. I'll just leave that there. So that's what I'm doing here. Creating a face. Creating a face. Very, very simple, like this. Okay, that one looks good. And in general, I'm still just kind of playing around with my proportions, playing around with the general shapes. And put some lips there. Let's go ahead and whiten the teeth. There we go. That looks grand. That looks really grand. Uh, I think overall, I actually want to, I'm gonna collapse this. I'm gonna duplicate it and merge it. That way we can make this even bigger because I want this to be mega big, mega big. And I didn't make this, in hindsight, I probably could have made the canvas a little bit higher res. But that's okay, because I really want to make some nice details for you guys. Nice details. That's more like it. Okay, cool. So we can begin kind of sculpting this face in. And immediately I can tell that this face, this is a common thing that happens. So don't be afraid if this happens to you too. Um, as I render the face, I've noticed that I tend to make it a little bit smaller. It tends to look a little bit small. Or the head, it looks a little bit small. So don't be afraid to just grab it and, and uh, size it up. And then you should end up with something a little bit more proportional looking. Okay, now let's get in there and let's really lay out some of these details. And I want you to notice how simple, how simple something can be and yet you can begin to feel the character within. Feel the character within. And that's just as simple as playing around with some of these values that were left behind with the sketch. And we're kind of just pushing and pulling now. We're pushing and pulling to the point where we say, hey, I like that. I like that very much. This shape right here, this looks really nice. I think that could maybe be like the hair or maybe it's like a piece of kelp as we were saying before. It's more kelpy looking, more leafy looking. Sure, why not? Let's roll with that. And there we go. Mm, that's looking good. Let's go ahead and whiten these eyes a little bit. There we go. Cool. That's looking quite nice. I'm defaulting to my Barbie face. I know, I know guys, I know you don't have to tell me. This is a little bit of my Barbie face. This is something that I, it's always this thing. I'll show you what my Barbie face is. So it's always like this pointed chin and then all of the facial features seem to kind of point right kind of towards the middle. It kind of does one of these things. Um, and that's not necessarily bad, as long as you are aware of it, you're like, okay, I know how to make like a pretty face, but then you always wanna ask yourself, okay, is there a way that we can make this look a little bit different, okay? Let's, let's just go ahead and uh, go into that. Let's go into that. I have done another tutorial on Barbie faces. In fact, I'll point you back to that right here if you wanna go more in depth on this. Uh, just click up here, it'll take you back to Barbie face syndrome, AKA drawing the same attractive girl face every single time, and ways that you can avoid that. And I'm going to quickly try to avoid that right now, okay? 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my normal nose right here, and I am going to actually maybe move it, let's move it up a little bit. Let's try moving it up a tad bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna take these lips, I'm gonna make the lips a little bit larger than I normally would. And already I can see a different character emerging, which is good. This is really good. Mmm. Yes, yes, I like that. I'm gonna take these eyes that normally point upwards, I'm gonna point them downwards. It's probably one of my favorite things to do uh, as of late. Differentiating my eyes a little bit. And then I am going to take this face shape. This is another really important thing, guys, is that the outer face the shape of the, the silhouette of like the jawbone and the chin really makes a big difference for your character. So never underestimate that. Never underestimate that point. And I want these eyes to be open a little bit more. There we go. And do you see how I did that? I just painted in that white. Just painted in the white to open the eye a little bit more. Okay. Let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to increase the size of this, the bridge of the nose, to give it a little bit more of almost like an alien look, because that's another thing that I like in my mermaids. I mean, if, if I had a preference for mermaids, I wouldn't want them to look utterly like superhuman. I like it when they have a bit of an alien feel to them. Maybe a little bit of a fish look to them, a fishy look. Okay, that looks good, that looks good. Okay, now let's go ahead and refine a little bit of these plates here. See, I'm just grabbing these colors to kind of like sculpt in where the plates would exist. And look at that, our, our sculpture is coming to life. Our piece is coming to life. I like that, I like that a lot. Now let's go ahead and cover this because the visor is going to be covering her face a tad bit. That looks pretty good. Now, I also think that I want to, I want to change this mouth up a little bit more. I think that I want to, I want to show that she has like, maybe like a fang or something. I want to show that she has like, kind of more like fishy looking teeth. Yeah, maybe something like that. She looks a little bit too pouty. Maybe she can be a happy mermaid, why not? Everybody does the pouty, sad looking girl face, why? Don't we do something different? There we go. That See, that looks cute. That looks cute, but it's not my Barbie face. And that makes me oh so happy. Oh so happy. It still has some, uh, it has the basic principles of what I would call my Barbie face, but I've changed it up just enough that way it's kind of become its own character. Now here's another thing that I'm seeing, is that do you see how the shadows of this eye kind of are showing they're showing, it looks like the shadow of the eye, but I would actually say, well, what if I want that to be like a, a pattern on her skin? Maybe I want this to be a pattern on her skin that actually comes down a little bit. Maybe it has like little markings that would go like this and this. You know, see, now you're starting to get somewhere. Now you're starting to get some way. Very good, very good. You put some shine on the lips, All right? You guys know how much I love my shine, my shine on. That is very cute. Okay, cool, cool. Let's go ahead and skin this up. And see how, okay, right there, do you see what I just did? See how I went from this to that? Do you see how that changes the character a lot? Remember what I said, the silhouette of the edge of the chin, the chin and the cheeks makes a big difference, okay? So, and I like that one, so we're gonna roll with that. Uh, I want this armor piece, whatever this is going to be, I want this to cover her neck. I'm always a fan of my properly armored ladies. You know that I like that. I like sexy ladies, but I also like, you know, if you're gonna make an armored lady, why not make it look just a little bit practical? Just a little bit practical. Uh, I'm going to say that our mermaid girl does not have, she does not have ears similar to our Similar to our furry girl, but rather she's gonna have gills over there. And actually, I want her eyes to be more cat-like. 
Ah, very good. Very good. I hope you guys are enjoying this thus far. Hope you guys are getting some good learning out of this. Um, I want her gills to be, oh, maybe a little bit of her gills can show like right here. Ooh, yeah, that looks really cool. Yeah, that's neat. That's really neat. I want this to come down a little bit and I want to skinny this up just a little bit. Maybe something more like that. Aha, very good. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. See, our character is coming to life. Character is coming to life. Okay, now at this point, I'm more than happy to zoom back out and let's take a look at the piece as a whole. Let's take a look at the piece as a whole and then we can go ahead and continue with this. Ah, awesome. Okay, so let's zoom out. Let's kind of make this, oh, not squish it that way. Let's go ahead and bring this down a little bit. And let's go right about there. That looks good. Let's zoom in and continue with this. Ah, yeah, see? So now we're starting to get somewhere. I like that. We got a cute face. Uh, let's go ahead and just refine a little bit more of the chest and shoulder areas. And we're going to call it good, people. We're going to call it good. We had a lot of fun drawing our mermaid today. Hope you guys learned some good stuff. And I'm going to show you how I quickly would go about laying in values and kind of cleaning this up. Okay, so the first thing that I want you guys to think about when you're concepting is not necessarily thinking so much in lines, but I want you to start thinking in terms of values. And that is a fancy way of saying, okay, well, what is what are the light parts and what are the dark parts? And then I want you to start painting those in to create, this is the important part, it's going to create depth, it's going to create materials, and most importantly, it's gonna create clarity. It's gonna create clarity in your piece. And this allows you to go in and say stuff like, okay, I want this area under the neck to be really dark. This area under the neck to be really dark. And you can go ahead and just, I mean, I'm grabbing colors on the canvas, but you can even start laying in darker ones too. Let's go ahead and start grabbing some darker colors and laying those in. Um, I'm gonna make sure that our helmet is on point helmet should be on point so speaking of point let's have it be one of those pointy helmets cool very cool uh, like that and then we can just kind of paint that away paint that away maybe grab some of this color down here that was representative of our metal and lay that in oh that's pretty good not bad there's still a lot of details that need to be worked out don't be afraid of that right now don't be afraid of that. There you go. But see how you can just do that? You can just like lay stuff in really quickly. And it allows you to start seeing, what do we call it? The piece within. Seeing the piece within. And see, so I can be like, okay, well I want this part to be maybe a darker value. Maybe there could be like some chain mail type stuff happening in here. I don't know, maybe some scales. Another thing that I really like to do when I'm working in values is I'll just like draw in maybe a little bit of details like this like oh maybe this can be like scales right here you know then we're working that that uh undersea vibe back into it okay because we're like oh, okay well we have this awesome armor but how do we make it feel more nautical how do we make it feel more like oh this was designed by the sea people the sea monkeys and that is things like drawing in scales but notice how i'm not going in there and i'm being like okay scales scales Scales, scales. I'm not drawing lines to represent scales, but rather I'm taking a color like this and I'm saying, okay, let's draw in just a few scales, something like this, and see how that represents the actual texture that's in there. And it only has to appear in certain points, and that's usually at the points of the brightest parts. Notice how I only put the scales in at the point where the light is kind of refracting off of it. Okay, now there were some cool designs in here. I don't want to lose those. Uh, another thing that you want to do when you're considering motifs is make sure that you have repeating patterns. So maybe we could reference something like our, oh, whoops. Maybe we could reference something like this awesome trident uh, thing down here and we could be like, okay, well, I like that design. Maybe we could bring some of that feeling up into this breastplate. Okay, and that is going to make your character feel like 
they are like their armor is custom made. They're not going to feel like a grunt type character, for lack of a better term. So kind of feel free to put those motifs or those design choices back into the piece. And before your very eyes, you will start to have a very cool looking, very cool looking, uh, unique armor set. And see how I'm just kind of like throwing in values every now and then. I'm just throwing them in to see how they feel. Throwing in to see how they feel. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's how you should be doing it. It's how you should be concepting your stuff. This is cute. I like this. I like this very much. Cool. Uh, let's see here. I do want to continue with the rest of this. I do want to put in values really quickly on the rest of our mermaid. So let's go ahead and group this, control J it. Let's go ahead and throw on values just in general on the rest of the piece. And then we're gonna finish it, people. Finish it up. I don't want to make this too small though. I guess I could, you know what? I could totally resize that canvas. Sneakily, while I answer some question catapults. And we got some good ones coming in. Whoops. Forgot I had to hit zero for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right, questions coming in. Computer's doing all the work in the background, and in the meantime, I'm going to distract you with these questions. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so you guys saw this. This show, by the way, is dedicated to Seagull Peapod, as well as Cantorona for asking these questions about how do I get started? How do I battle the blank canvas? I wanted to do this for you guys today. So hope you like my tips and tricks for how to do that. But let's go ahead and move on to the rest of these questions. And that is, uh, how do you get smooth? Let's let that Load, okay. Uh, oh, single people, man, just firing them off. How do you get smooth gradients with lighting? Uh, and they are asking basically how to, is this about how to blend? Let's see. The show that I have is get the light and dark parts to smoothly blend together. Okay, use the soft brush to make it big. It always spills out the rest of what I'm lighting. Okay, so that is a really good question. I'll be happy to answer that. Let's go ahead and get back to the piece. I think this is done now. Uh oh. Oh crap. Did I totally just. I think I just killed the entire thing. Oh no. Oh, wait, 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 wait. It's coming back. It's coming back. <laughs> oh, please. Please. Don't do this. Please, computer. Come on. You can do this. This is such a good show. This is such a good show. Don't. Don't screw it up yet. Okay, in the meantime, we can answer some other questions. Oh, it looks like, okay, it's finally picking back up. It is reviving itself from the dead. Um, I wanna answer this other question in the meantime. And that is, uh, this one's coming in from Roizen83. They're asking, exposing your skills. Is that a good idea? Is that a good idea? Now they're asking, how is it that you and other artists are able to make videos exposing your drawing techniques to complete strangers? Aren't you concerned about facing the potential threat of competition from aspiring artists from around the reach your level, right? Because the things you demonstrate on your videos, <laughs> and I love, I love this question. It is so funny. Um, oh, they're saying also that if a carpenter teaches all their clients how to build a chair, then nobody else will buy chairs from him again, other furniture for that matter. Okay, I can totally see where you're coming from. And I'll be happy to answer this question, uh, Roy Zen. And the answer is no, of course I'm not worried about teaching my techniques to you guys because to be honest there's so many like there's so many jobs available for artists for people to be concept artists and and to be honest we need a lot more good ones because we've got plenty of mediocre artists not that there's anything wrong with that we've got plenty of amateur artists again everybody's on their journey but we need more people that get these general ideas we need more people by the way this is finally done loading we need more people that understand motifs. We need more people that understand how to create something from nothing, right? Cre create a unique idea by properly stealing. And um, so no, I'm not afraid of teaching you guys this at all because 
you want to know the other thing is that the carpenter teaches the person how to build a chair. But then you know what the carpenter does? He doesn't necessarily run out of work. Instead, the carpenter now has a team of people that know how to build chairs. And then you know what the carpenter does? He stops building chairs and he makes everybody else that he taught build the chairs for him. And he just sits at the top and he gets to run the business, right? <laughs> and that's, that's honestly what, you know, I'm not afraid of that. I love teaching artists because sure enough, there comes a point where I'm working on a project and then the team comes to me and says, Keenan, we want you to run a new project. Do you have anybody in mind? And you know what I think about? I think about people that I know. I think about my students. I think about people who have grasped these techniques and know how to execute them properly. And then I can go to them with confidence and say, hey, remember how I taught you how to build that chair? Well, guess what? You're gonna do it for a new project and it's gonna be my project. And I am gonna direct you. So it's really fun. I like doing that stuff. I like a little bit of that mixture of, by the way, I should totally be uh, adding in the values on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm not afraid of that at all. Not afraid of that at all. And I have seen people, this is the part that pains me is I have seen people that are afraid of teaching. They're afraid that their secret is gonna get out. Oh no, what if people know that my secret for creating good work is that I actually just take ideas from other people that work really well and then I just kind of like mush it around a little bit and then I make it into something that I call original and then I never show my reference. You know, it's like there's plenty of artists out there that do that. And to be honest, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of seeing that stuff. I'm sick of people trying to hide stuff. Like they think that what they have is so special that they can't tell anybody. Because in all honesty, it's not. It's not that special. It's, it's not necessarily your skill that makes you special, but rather it's the time that you've invested. The skill and the technique is not the secret that you're hiding. It's just the fact that you've spent so long doing it. You've been doing it your entire life and you've gotten to a point where you're so dang good at it that people want to, you know, that, and then they look at you and they're like, oh, what's the secret? Well, the secret is years. The secret is years of time. The secret is taking, <laughs> messing up a lot. The secret is finding people that are better than you. First of all, admitting that people are better than you. And then through that, you can have a lot of fun. You can have a lot of fun because you can improve at a crazy rate by just admitting that, hey, I have a lot to learn and let's get to learning. All right, so that's my answer to that question. Let's go ahead and go back to that other one real quick. This one's looking pretty cool. Nice, nice. Okay, uh, what was that question we totally skipped out on earlier? That was smooth gradients with lighting. And I'm also going to take this one at the same time. Uh, and that is more dynamic composition tutorials. Uh, what keeps me awake at night is that I can't get dynamic. I like how you add that detail in there. Uh, Javier <laughs> keeps me awake at night. Like, oh, dynamic poses. Oh, how do they do it? <laughs> I can totally see that happening. It's happened to me too. Uh, balance. Is it possible for you to cover more of this in future videos? I hope that you have seen my older tutorial on creating uh, dynamic poses, Javier. Because if you haven't, then you should definitely go check that out right now. But I agree that I should do more on that and I will in the future. But in the meantime, uh, yeah, go check that out first. And then I will definitely consider doing more of that in the future because I've thought more about it. I was like, I can explain a lot of those principles much better, much better. Specifically with dealing with cameras and like how my, like when I punch the camera here, see how my fist is like two times the size of my head. Yet if I'm back here, now it's like my fist isn't two times the size of my head. And why does that happen? Because the same action is happening, but the camera is closer. But describing that, describing the camera is closer is not something that is immediately digestible. So I'm trying to think of another way to put it. Another way to put it when you are drawing your own pieces. And I'll be getting to that in the future, so don't worry. Um, but in the meantime, let's talk about smooth gradients. Smooth gradients. And where's a good place that I could demonstrate this? Hmm, where could I demonstrate this? I wonder if I could even demonstrate it on this piece. Well, actually I could, I could. I can demonstrate it on the tail right here. Okay, so let's say that you have this tail, you have detail here, and you want to smooth out all of this nastiness. Well, the first thing that I wanna ask that you do is make sure that you have clean lines, not everywhere, but just on the edges. Clean lines on the edges. Things that are basically your bounding boxes. What are your bounding boxes for where you're going to create this smooth gradient? Something like this. Okay, and you have all this messy stuff in here. We wanna clean this up. 
okay? But make sure your edges are nice and clean. Then you'll have something like this. Now, step two. Step two to clean it up. I'm sure you've seen me do this before. You're gonna create a new layer and you're gonna select your soft brush. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to freely focus on just laying in your soft colors. And inevitably what's gonna happen, in fact, I think this is what you said in your question, is that you're gonna run into this where you're kind of painting outside of it. You're gonna wanna like paint in this light part, but then it's kind of like overflowing into everything else. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because do you remember what we did at the beginning? We created a new layer and you know what creating a new layer allows us to do? We can go back in and we can erase. We can erase from the edges. We can erase from right here, erase right there. And see now you have, see look at that. Now you have a clean transition and a smooth gradient on its own layer. And then for every subsequent thing that you want to do, again, create a new layer. And let's say, okay, let's blend this now. And again, don't worry about going out of the lines. Don't worry about spilling over and making your lines all nasty because eventually what you're gonna do is think of it as like, you're almost like stenciling. You're almost like airbrushing and then removing the stencil. But you removing the stencil is going back in and erasing. Erase and cut it down to size. Erase it and cut it down to size and you'll get something like that. All right, look at that. See, we have smooth transitions. Ah, how nice is that? So that's my best advice for you about how to get that done. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're gonna end it. I think we're gonna end it. Let's go ahead and uh, let's celebrate by taking a look at our finished piece, our finished mermaid. Oh, isn't that awesome? That is absolutely awesome. In hindsight, I totally should have made this canvas the other way so that way it was more accommodating for a tall creature. But in all, I think this is a very cool, this is a very cool thing that we came up with today. And let's go ahead and just revisit everything that led us up to this point. Where's all our sketches? Where, where the heck are they? Did I lose them? Oh, there we go. Okay, so remember guys, this is how it starts. I don't want you to forget this. Don't go in there and be like, okay, I know how to sketch. I just need to be more creative. I just need to, no. What you need to do is you need to be thinking smaller. You think you're drawing small enough? You're probably still wrong. Draw even smaller, even smaller. And then eventually you wanna to get to something like this, little scribbles, and then you'll size that up. And then sure enough, you will get to a point We'll have something unique, interesting, and it will have balance, most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, balance of large shapes, medium shapes, and small shapes. And with that, I think we're gonna go ahead and end today's show. We're gonna end today's show. So thank you guys so much for joining me on YouTube. Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. My name is Ken Lafferty. Oh yeah, and if you would like to download today's PSD, take a look at all these layers and sketches for yourself and just click up here, it'll take you over to Patreon where you can download not only today's PSD, but all the other PSDs from the past. And of course, I wanna say thank you guys so much for all the support that you guys have given the show. I'm glad that you guys get not only good value of watching this, but also the fact that you go and support, download the, the PSDs, and that, uh, yeah, I really want you guys to get some good value out of that, good education. So, yeah, with all that out of the way, we're gonna go and end today's show, and I need to pull up the lovely lane because that is our new outro. Let me go ahead and pull that up. All right, and we are out, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the lovely lane. Again, thank you to everyone who has submitted their awesome art. If you haven't done it, then uh, you'll see the way that you can get there yourself. Get featured on next week's show. So I'm out. You guys take care, and I'll see you next week.